Yo, what's up guys? It's Radislav here and in this video, we're going to be talking about you. Who are you? Why are you here? What do you really stand for? Who am I? And this video is going to be a large video with a lot of topics covered. So let's buckle in because it's probably worth 10 videos worth of information in this. And we'll start with the ego. Ego kind of separates you from the rest of the world, defines who you are and who you believe you are. The ego is something we think we have control of, but realistically we don't until we start looking at it and deciding we have control over it. When you're a baby and you're born, you don't have a name. You don't really associate like, I'm Radislav. This is what I stand for. This is who I am. A lot of the times as adults, people believe what they believe is coming from them, but it has nothing to do with them. It's what happened to them as a child. Growing up, watching their parents, brothers, sisters, friends, media, commercials, TV, propaganda that teaches you what you should believe and the values you hold. If you're a different country, different culture, we can see that there's just different values. And in that, we're going to discover and play with how you can actually define yourself. A thought experiment I like is to imagine you can download your brain into a computer spreadsheet and see every piece of knowledge you have in your head. And what you're going to see beside that is a person or thing that gave you that information. How to tie a shoe, mom, how to write the word word, dad, how to cook, a uh, how to cook eggs, Gordon Ramsay on YouTube. That stuff comes externally and starts to create who you are and your vision of yourself. But those things are superficial. What your views on God are, women, relationships, how to be a lover, how to be a friend, what to do when someone makes you angry. These are more below the surface and not accessible during daily thought, unless you actually sit down and reflect on it. For example, you can see people that are controlled in difficult situations and they can express themselves and explain to someone else why something affected them. If we look at other people, you can see that they're basically just children in adult bodies. They haven't learned emotional intelligence, how to control their anger, how to speak to other people properly because they haven't been taught that from their parents or family. Maybe they grew up watching Jerry Springer and everyone on Jerry Springer is yelling at each other in front of an audience, just being dramatic. And that is their expression of life and belief of who they are and how they act. But it's not really who they are. It's just programming. If you take a dog and you teach it a trick or you teach it a good behavior or a bad behavior, that dog doesn't necessarily understand the good or the bad. It just knows that behavior and it's been conditioned to learn and reproduce it, which is what humans are. We're just conditioned to many different things. And if we don't sit down and reflect with ourselves on those things, those actions, those behaviors, then we're just living automatic patterns. 95% of life is just automatic patterns. I get up in the morning, I brush my teeth, I go to work, I come home, I have dinner, I watch TV. There's an expected pattern and when we start breaking those patterns, then we really discover what is important to ourselves, what is important in our lives and who we are truly. So something of an example I'm gonna give you is religious programming as a child. A child grows up and doesn't really have the capability of discerning or critical thinking. They're just taught what they're taught and that's how they express and live life. So an example, if I were to grow up and someone was constantly reinforcing me with church, parents, cultural society, people around me, friends, that there is a man up in the sky watching everything I do and judging me. And if I do anything wrong, I'm a bad person. I'm going to go to hell. To me, you know, everyone's religion, you can do whatever you want. But to me, that sounds kind of ridiculous. Why would a man in the sky be watching everything I do and judging me? It's a choice to believe it. But... If you're young and you're programmed into that, it's not as much of a choice and you're forced to believe it. And so when you grow older and let's say you're a man or a woman and you marry someone, let's say a good example. I don't know if this is a good example. This is an example. If you're a woman and you marry a guy and he beats you every night and becomes an alcoholic, but you can't divorce him because you have a fear of God. And if you divorce him or commit suicide to get out of the relationship, you're going to go to hell and you're going to suffer for all eternity. If you truly believe that deep down, then you're going to stick with that man, but you're going to end up manifesting a disease. 
something to get you out of this because it's an easier escape to choose an unhealthy life and basically spend 10 or 20 years. I know this sounds really sad and it's not the truth for everyone, but it is the truth for some people that you build up a disease for yourself so you can die because you don't want to live this life anymore. You don't enjoy living. But beyond not enjoying living, you have a deep-seated fear that's put into you from your adults and parents and people around you that there's a man in the sky that's going to, you know, hate me and put me into jail, not put, put me into hell because of my actions on this earth. If you don't sit and reflect and realize that that is just a condition of programming and that if you're born to a different family, a different religion, a different area, but same person and raised differently, that wouldn't be the belief in your head and that your beliefs are just things reinforced over and over and over until you think that they're a fact. But that's not the case. A belief is not a fact. It's just something that's reinforced over and over and over. Whew. All right. Outside of religion, I'm sorry to bag on religion. There's a lot of good things. But there's a lot of bad things. We have governments, medias, corporations buying your mind. So much advertisement goes out to children into what to believe. An easy example is Barbie dolls, women programming to be a certain way, big boobs, thin waist, nice butt, shaved legs, everything shaved, makeup. Same for guys, the Hercules model. You gotta be big, you gotta be huge, you gotta be strong, you gotta be tough, you can't show emotion. It's all programming that they want to put into you. And if we don't sit back and reflect on it, then we're just stuck in that pattern. What we have to realize is that you're sovereign. You can make a choice today after watching this video. Maybe my words hit you. Maybe in a year or two, someone else's words hit you that you're sovereign and that you can choose to do what you want with your life. And you don't have to do what your parents tell you to do. You don't have to do what society tells you to do. You don't have to take the safe option. You don't have to have $10 million in the bank, be a doctor. You, you could be a janitor with a family and be extremely happy and fulfilled in that family relationship and just connecting and being with the loved ones and not have to chase externalities. That's a choice that you can make, but you have to reflect and sit back on your values as you do that. As we move forwards, you have to realize that in your life and your experience, that's really what matters. And most of your beliefs and ideas are coming from books you learned in school, things you see in the media. And what we have to think about is those people are also programmed people. What we see in a book isn't law, isn't reality. It's someone else's reality written down. History is someone else's reality written down. And most of the time it's the victor's reality written down and saved. So whoever wins the war, wins the battle. They're the heroes. They're the good people immortalized in the books and everything else about that. Uh, other country they took over is destroyed and they're bad people. It's all propaganda. They want to control you through knowledge and tell you that certain things are a certain way and that that's a fact of science or even religion. You read the Bible. This is the word of law. Well, in my opinion, it's 2000 years old. Any man could have written and changed it over time. How do I know it's the word of God? The word of God is, and I'm sorry for getting so religious, such an easy way to describe all of this, but it wasn't up to people to understand the word of God. It was up to popes and priests and someone, some authority figure speaking to God to tell you what God wants and needs from you versus you deciding from yourself, what is God? How do I feel in my relationship to the universe, spirituality, should you choose to go down that path and think about it? So, that's where critical thinking comes from. What's my experience? Does this sound logical? And that's what people break away and you hear these stories of, um, oh God, what was that name of that church? The Westboro Baptist Church, where they go to people's funerals. They, they just do a lot of really bad stuff. I'm not gonna get into Westboro Baptist Church, but a lot of stuff that many people would disagree with, um, but people do it. They're indoctrinated into it and that's their belief and they raise his children. Something else to consider is, uh, this is kind of out of nowhere, but it's a placebo effect. If you believe something, you're gonna manifest and it's gonna come true. This is documented, this is studied. If you wanna look at the science, you can, it's your choice, but I think it's, most people are gonna agree with me on the placebo effect that 
if I take a medication or if I drink a certain thing or do a certain program and I really believe that it's going to work, then it's going to have a placebo effect regardless of what that thing is. If I believe there's a man in the sky that's going to kill me, I'm manifesting that into my life. If I believe drinking water a special certain way is going to heal me, I'm going to manifest that into my life. Same way as if a doctor tells you you have cancer, you're going to live, uh, you only have three months to live, more of a nocebo effect. You didn't take anything, but this authority figure that you really believe in is telling you you have something, you manifest it. And this is documented too. People will die of cancer. They open up the body. There's no cancer. The person just manifested their own death because they believe so strongly in this doctor telling them that they only had three months to live, that they manifested three months of living. Let's extrapolate that. People think, and I hear this argument all the time, our technology is getting better, we're living longer, so because of that, there's more opportunity and chance to get it to these aged-related diseases. Cancer, Alzheimer's, heart attacks, and it's just because we're living beyond 30 years. You can choose to believe that, there's research into it, but again, it's a belief. Until I get to 60 years old, 80 years old, and even then, I only know because of my body, I'm just being told by random people that I don't know, that I've never met, that, oh yeah, around 45 years old, research shows you might get a heart attack, 50% likely. I don't know what the numbers are. But for men, that's around the time when you start getting a heart attack. Or if your father and their father died of a heart attack before 50, you have it in your head that, oh God, my genetics is going to dictate that I will probably die by 45 or 50. And if you believe that, you're going to manifest it, like the nocebo, placebo. It it's more likely to happen versus I'm healthy. I take care of myself. My father didn't take care of himself. That's why he got it. It's not why I'm going to get it. This whole genetics, people really believing into it. If you believe into it, it's true. If you don't believe into it, it's not true. That's how I see the world. So why would I choose to hold on to a belief that's going to have me dying and miserable at 50 versus believing counter to everything else, counter to science that I can live to 150 years old. By the time I'm 120, okay, maybe I'll start slowing down then. Versus what a lot of people believe because of programming, because of what's in their reality, because of what they see, that, okay, at 65, I'm going to retire, and I'm just going to sit back in old age. My body's going to stop working. I'm going to get fat. I'm going to lose my ability to walk, lose my ability to speak, to think, my mental capacities. I talk to a lot of people that have that belief, and that's how they see themselves, and they talk themselves. And if you do that, the more you do it, the more you see it, the more you're building that placebo, nocebo effect, the more it's going to happen. So I think why choose to limit yourself with um, scientific research or other things like other people's experience of life, which is based on some other dogmas versus sitting down and choosing, hey, I didn't do this research. I didn't study thousands of people. I didn't shake the hand of a doctor that studied a thousand people because a lot of the time, Science is just paid and bought for by corporations and by governments that have an agenda they want to push. They want to push medication. They want to sell you this and make money at that and hold power over you. I'm going to give you an easy example of how you can fake studies. Let's take Kellogg's. This is documented. If you're Kellogg's, you got billions of dollars to research and prove that your cereal is healthy and good for people. They should be eating it. You can afford to pay scientists to run an experiment a hundred times and 90 times it's going to show that the cereal caused detrimental effects to these people but maybe five times it was okay did nothing happen and five times wow this actually showed positive benefit of beneficial effects just randomly because the other people they have lives outside of a cereal box and what they're doing eating cereal and so now they run those hundred studies they don't have to publish a hundred studies they can just publish five that are showing what they want to show because they control the money and the money controls the scientists. Scientists aren't running around and I believe that they're good people. Doctors are good people. They have good intentions, but money and power control the world. And if no one's paying you to do a research project because they can't make money on it or because it doesn't support what their vision of reality is, then they're not going to run it. That's what, that's what science boils down is you need money to run science. And the people that control the money, because of that, can control what comes out and dictate the results and 
skew everything. We like to put science on a pedestal of thinking it's absolute. These are all good people that want us to have the truth. They want us to have their version of the truth so they can make money and keep us enslaved in power over us. End of the day here. <laughs> you need to know yourself and choose for yourself what you want to believe. I could be completely wrong. Maybe everyone does get cancer and aging diseases by the age of 70 and I'm just way off and the research is 99% positive that it's true. Even if that were the case, I don't want to believe it. Why would I believe something limiting that's 50 years into my future that, as I said, I could placebo, nocebo, manifest it if I wanted to? Why am I choosing to manifest something negative versus something positive? Of, I'm going to live to 150 years old and by 120, you know, maybe I'll start slowing down at that point. Why not? There's 80, 90, 100 year old people that are still kicking ass. And if you think that those people are kicking ass because they had the mentality of, Oh, by 70, I'll be slowing down. No, they had the mentality of I'm going to keep going to the rest of my life and keep moving. I'm not going to be disabled. I'm not going to need someone else's support. That's the kind of mentality that gets you there versus taking the easy, easy road. It's not easy. It's not easy going to get into 60 and 70, having a broken body and living with it and accepting that as truth. So yeah, I think my, my long winded rant, take it for whatever you want reality who you are you decide moment to moment and you can choose the best version of yourself or the pre-programmed version of everyone else's beliefs and if you think most people are living their real beliefs and sharing value to you they're just living their programming and the people that taught them and those people that taught them versus questioning are my parents right about this was my teacher really right about this Anyways, thank you guys for listening, especially if you made it all the way through. Make sure to subscribe. Share this video if you found it valuable. If there's someone else in your life that you think would see value in this, um, please share that. That's why I make these videos, uh, is to help people. So I hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you in the next one.